Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with a Lucian supplementary guide and today we're going to be talking about on hit kind of tank shredder Lucian which is pretty uh, pretty interesting build. Uh, but you know, let's hop straight into it. So first off, as usual, we're going to start off with the gluttonous grease for the the AD as well as the movement speed. Uh, I'm Omni Vamp I mean, but of course every boost you get movement speed. So first item we're going to start off with is the Bork. Of course Bork is the classic first item uh, for every on-hit build. Uh, of course you get the attack speed, the AD, the physical vamp, and of course the on-hit uh, current health damage and also the drain passive. Very very useful on Lucian because he can proc it really really quickly. Of course because of his rapid um, auto attacks. So um, next up, the next item we're going to go for is Terminus. So Terminus... Um, of course more AD and attack speed, same thing, we have magic damage on hit as well as of course getting the stacking armor uh, and magic resist and also the stacking pen uh, as you uh, attack of course. And of course once again Lucian stacked this up real quick because he has a double auto every single time that he uh, casts an ability so this stacks up really quickly as well. And of course classic uh, on hit is going to be, by the way these are the only two core items for this build, the rest of the items can be changed uh, around or uh, you know, remove things like that. So next up uh, we have Wit's End, uh, another classic on hit item, attack speed, magic resist, uh, on hit magic damage again and of course healing when you're below half HP. And then we have Triforce here, Triforce is just a very well rounded item, gives you health, you know, gives you AD, attack speed, ability haste, and uh, of course the most important part the spell blade passive, which of course um, gives you uh, more on hit damage because of course you're only attacking in between your spell cast so when you attack in between your spell cast you're going to apply the on hit of Bork, of Terminus, of Wit's End and of course the spell blade from Triforce as well and last item we have GA for the revive but of course you can change Triforce uh, and GA as well um, so here we have some other item options so first off if the enemy team is like full AP or something you could go for Maw uh, as the last item uh, you could instead of going for Triforce or instead of going for GA, you could also go for Bloodthirster which even though it's not exactly an on-hit item, it's just a very good item because it just gives you so much AD, uh, physical vamp and of course extra stats, uh, one of the best um, items in the game. So uh, Bloodthirster always has a place in the Lucian build. And then we have a couple of funky options, so first up we have Spear of Sojin as a last item or like second last item, could be viable as well. Uh, because it does give you health to basically increase the survivability. AD and um, ability haste is also pretty good. And of course, basically what happens is after you ulti, you can of course get um, movement speed as well as lower ability cooldowns. And it of course resets on kill. And Lucian uh, in team fights, it, um, by the time you get Spear of Sojin, is supposed to ult. Uh, in, uh, initially to chunk them out first before he dashes in. He's not really, you don't really want to just dash in without ulting. Uh, of course you have situations that are like that, like you know, we have a snap engage and you have to flash in, things like that. But ideally you want to chunk them out with your ulti first, which is going to proc Spear of Sojin, which is then going to allow you to get all of the benefits. And of course if you want a shield and more health, Steric Gauge is going to be there uh, for you. And another option that I didn't actually put in here is going to be Black Cleaver, but Actually, Black Cleaver is not an option because we have Terminus, so you can't build uh, Black Cleaver, so that's not an option at all. So for the runes, uh, of course, uh, we have Empowerment slash PTA. Uh, of course, Lucian procs this very easily with his uh, double auto attacks, and of course, also just increases the damage to whoever you're attacking. Brutal, of course, uh, more on-hit damage. Giant Slayer in general um, against, you know, people who build health. Uh, but Coup de Gras against a full squishy team, which uh, if you're playing to a full squishy team, you shouldn't be building this on-hit build anyway. So it's pretty much Giant Slayer 100% of the time. And here we have um, Bloodline, of course, for the healing. Now, I do see people like to go for Alacrity on Lucian nowadays just to get that double auto in faster. But I think on the on-hit build, completely unnecessary because you already got so much attack speed from your build. And here you can go for Sudden Impact for a more offensive option, or you could go for Bone Plating for a more defensive option, depending on what you prefer. And for the spells, of course, it's going to be flashed together with um, Exhaust. And uh, that's pretty much it for the loadout. Let's move on to talking about the gameplay. Okay, so now into the gameplay. So basically, first things first is you only really want to build this build if you're playing into some tanky people. Now, what do you mean by tanky people? Well, here we have uh, Renekton as well as Volibear who are definitely two very very tanky champions. So my concern here is I'm not going to be able to kill them. So there is a situation where, let's say I can one-shot Pike, Caitlyn, and um, Jace. But we're going to have a problem where we cannot damage Volley and... and uh, 
Renekton. So in this build, I'm pretty much focusing on killing Volley and Renekton, and we should still have enough damage to kill the rest, just that we won't one-shot them as hard as previously. So you can see level 1, it's already an intense fight. We take W level 1, we exhaust Caitlyn, we propped PTA onto the Pike, which is not really the target we want, because we kind of want to hit Caitlyn. Um, overall, um, I think the trade's roughly even, because after Pike regains his health, it's about the same as mine. Um, and Nami's a little bit lower, so here I get hooked, and unfortunately I take a lot of damage. Caitlyn, um, Q, uh, actually I tried to flash the Caitlyn Q, but I believe it actually hit hit me and then I flashed, so I guess that was a wasted flash, because I got hit anyway, so um, didn't really matter that I flashed, so kind of just wasted my flash for no reason there. I guess it reacted a little bit too slow, Mundo comes in, we get level 2, dash in, finish off Caitlyn for first blood, Pike has to flash, uh, because we have PTA on him and he's getting run down by Mundo as well as myself. So uh, overall, really nice gang by the Mundo, really nice adaptation. The two camp into the bot gang, seeing as there was a lot of uh, opportunity in the bot lane. Uh, without the Mundo coming, we wouldn't have been able to get the kill. So uh, really good uh, play by the Mundo. So generally, Lucian prefers to play with an engaged support, but with the exception being Nami, because Nami can give him the orbs. Uh, and the movement speed and all the extra damage and stuff. So Lucian Nami is of course a very strong combo and it has been for a very very long time now. But in general Lucian likes to play with Engage so that he can fight in the early game and get killed. So here uh, after a while you, we kind of notice the pike behavior which is that he's channeling hook and he's releasing the hook every single time. So it's really easy to play around his hook because in case you guys didn't know if you cancel the channel of pike hook it refreshes your cooldown by half. So since he's hooking every single time like this, even when there's no chance of hitting, his hook is going on a very long cooldown, so you can just play around the hook cooldown. And like when there's no threat such as now, you can just play a little bit more aggressively, um, you know, if you want to. Of course, being sure to get vision of the river with the ward to make sure a volley bear doesn't randomly show up. So here again, like his hook goes to nowhere. Uh, he manages to bait us toward the river for the volley bear. Uh, stun goes in onto the Nami and root, uh, gets rooted by the trap as well. Really good trap placement by Caitlyn. And uh, Pike whiffs another hook. Asol is here for the roam. I'm gonna walk away because Pike hook uh, cooldown is gonna come back up soon and I don't get hooked into three people. Um, here it is. Uh, managed to just barely dash away from the hook. And uh, yeah, so since Caitlyn is obviously gonna back because she's really, really low, uh, I'm just going to finish off this minion wave uh, and then I shall back as well. Uh, at the same time getting just a little bit of free poke onto the pike. I'm kind of running out of mana at this point as well, so I'm going to back and uh, start building toward my uh, components. So one, I guess, sort of good thing you could say about this build is, technically speaking, Bork builds out of Vamp Scepter, which is also what Bloodthirster builds out of, which is the other build Lucian can go, of course, the crit build. So there is an, of course, the runes and all that are the same, so there is a situation where you could, um, you could possibly, um, have a situation where you somehow manage to get two to three kills in lane and you just decide to just straight up go for the one shot build uh, as in the crit build just because of how fed you are that could be a possibility as well um, so you know always consider that um, and that's one of the benefits of you know Bork as the first item because it builds from the same things here Nami gets hooked in uh, but nothing really happens here Caitlyn uh, nets the minion by accident instead of me so I'm still at full health Pike just getting chunked a little bit but he has his passive to regain health so this is what I'm talking about, the pike just hooks me, but there's no fallout anyway, so it doesn't really matter that I got hooked here. Uh, but pike's just spamming the hook off of cooldown, so here again the hook's off cooldown, he's just hooking anyway. Um, tries to dash in, we dodge, and um, his healing from the passive is insane, because he was like... He basically regained all of his health already, he flashes away, and now we're focusing Caitlyn instead. Unfortunately, Nami gets hooked in here. I'm focusing the pike now, trying to get the kill on him. We get the PTA proc and we get the kill. And Caitlyn's now just running us down. We have to flash because she's running us down with the ghost. And we are going to pick up the fruit here. Caitlyn uh, overextends for the kill on me, but doesn't get it. Instead, gets snacked on by Mundo, um, who picks up the kill. And uh, I think I should have stayed for a plate here, but I saw Jace going out of vision. So I'm not sure if Jace was roaming down to bot. So I decided not to take the risk and uh, instead to just... Um, go back to base and uh, get my recurve bow. Obviously by the point you get the recurve bow, you're kind of committed to the on-hit build already because nothing from the crit build really builds out of recurve bow. So here the objectives have spawned um, and uh, Mundo is going to the to the uh, Herald. Pike has actually roamed to the Herald. So we know that Caitlyn is alone and Nami uh, did not roam to the Herald. So here what we can try to do is 
you can try to, um, you know, push Caitlyn in, get some poke on her, maybe even kill her if she makes a mistake, or get some tower plates. Jace is now roaming, uh, roaming down as well. Mundo is actually deciding to do the dragon instead. So we're gonna hit over because we have parity. We're dashing on onto the Jace. Uh, remove his first strike. We force his flash. And we're just going to focus the dragon uh, while the the uh, enemy team is supposedly doing the herald. So here, nothing too much is happening. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reset and then quickly make my way back to the. I'm assuming Volley Bear is already finishing the heralds. It's not contestable, but I was initially thinking that I might have made the wrong decision. But turns out when my team shows up, Volley Bear does indeed secure the herald, so it wasn't actually contestable anyway. And Caitlyn is getting a lot of uh, free tower damage, and she has already picked up a plate. And now two plates. So here, we have to come back uh, to defend the tower against Caitlyn, lest she just picks up a couple kills worth of gold from tower plates. So here, of course, Lucian, Caitlyn 1v1 is a little bit difficult because Caitlyn has range and she can harass you. So the only way you can kill her is to all in. So here, I'm waiting for an opportunity. I sp let her use her headshot and then I just dash in on, on her, exhaust, and just kill her, of course. I do have an, a 1v1 advantage. Um, because I have exhaust, so the moment she overextends and gets into my dash reach, I can dash on top of her, pop my combo and exhaust her for the slow and the re damage reduction and just basically one shot her like you what like, uh, what you saw there. And here I'm just going to get the tower plate I'm just going to leave. I have made the mistake of trying to kill a pike before uh, un uh, under tower and I just got hooked in, stunned and just died. Of course that doesn't happen all of the time, but pike is really difficult to kill with his grey health. So I'm just going to to back instead and pick up this BF sword which is going to build into Terminus. One lovely thing about Terminus is the build path is really good. You get recurve world and you get BF sword, both of which are really good components depending on who you are. Like for someone like Lucian, BF sword is amazing but if you're playing someone who wants attack speed, recurve world is amazing as well. And uh, the component items are just really really good. So really nice bubble uh, blind by Nami, uh, just predicting where the Caitlyn would be just when she walks into the bush and Caitlyn bites the dust again. And this allows us to push in the minion wave, get a ward down in the river, and then push down this tower. We also have Mundo kind of covering. Um, so if anyone shows up here, they're probably going to die. Or at the minimum, we're going to get the tower and get out safely, which is exactly what we did. Uh, because we don't really have vision of anyone else on the enemy team, uh, instead of just pushing in that next wave, which is pretty far up, we're going to back. Turns out we could have because they actually are at top lane. But of course we wouldn't have known that uh, at that point in time. So I generally always want to take the safer play, um, you know, just to be sure. And uh, Jace for some reason is inside our jungle farming the, the chickens. So we are trying to run him down here. I'm not sure what the plan was for him there. I'm popping the ulti onto him. Um, and uh, here I'm just going to flash over to finish him off. Now if I was playing the one shot build, he would have died instantly there. But I had to get in an extra auto. But this would be in an awkward position where... I have PTA propped on me by the Renekton, and Renekton is 5 and 0, so he just basically just kills me. Here Volley Bear is trying to run Nami down, runs straight into the bubble, uh, misses the slow, Caitlyn out hits but Nami survives, and Nami manages to bait Volley Bear all the way into between towers, and uh, the slow comes out from Aesol and the Rhylize, and Vayne gets the last hit and finishes off the kill. Uh, Renekton, I'm not sure if he was trying to bait or what, but basically he's not just getting run down by the Vayne, and Vayne actually picks up the 800 goal shutdown onto the Renekton. Of course, Vayne is going to be pretty amazing this game as well, because obviously versus, versus Renekton as well as Volley Bear, she's going to be able to shred them to pieces just because of how uh, the way her true damage works. And uh, yeah, of course, it is a Vayne top in this particular game. Not, um, yeah, Vayne's pretty good against their front line. Um, not so good against their back line though. So arguably this match, I maybe should have just gone for the normal uh, one-shot kind of crit build instead of going for the, the uh, on-hit build because even though they have a tanky frontline, if my Vayne does her job correctly, she should be able to get rid of the frontline for us and then I can just burst the backline. But of course, uh, like I always say, you can never really trust uh, you know, your, your teammates, uh, especially if they're randoms. Of course, if you're pre it's different, but they're just random people, so um, I'd rather not take the risk. Now here, as we go for the skull, we're getting jumped on by a a couple of people and Nami gets caught out by the pike by the um, the pike hook and doesn't end up dying and I make the mistake of taking the fruit uh, I get hooked by the pike as well and executed as well so definitely should just kept running instead of taking the fruit for no reason uh, I didn't even need the fruit I just took it for mana actually uh, but I actually could have I could have just uh, could have just left and, and went back all the way to the tower I wouldn't have died so definitely a mistake for me right there 
Uh, and the worst part is that the thought that they could be chasing me down did cross my mind, but I was thinking it's less likely than, than, than yes, I guess you could say. So anyways, here the dragon gets taken by the enemy team, so no, uh, no, no soul for us. Mundo is tanking a lot of damage here, but he survives for so long, he's delaying a lot of the time such that Vayne is DPSing and actually killing them. And now I reach the party, and I'm gonna kill the, the volley here. And Vayne is now 1v1 against the Jace, but you can see here, she doesn't work very well against the Jace. She does get one shot by the Jace, who's building full lethality. Uh, Jace now has Yomus together with Collector, and it looks like he's building into... Not quite sure, it might be Sorelda's. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what he's building into, but looks like he's going for that lethality kind of build, so... Uh, Vayne just gets one shot by him, because Vayne doesn't really do enough damage to the Jace. Oh, uh, by the way guys, if you take a look at my, my build and Vayne's build now, it's exactly identical except for the boots, which is kind of funny. Um, one thing to note here is that in this match, I didn't go wit's end, because the enemy team had zero magic damage at all in their team. Renekton does no magic damage, Volibear, I think maybe does a little bit of magic damage, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Jace, Caitlyn, and Pike all do physical damage as well, so there is actually a very decent argument to just go armor boots in this game because armor boots have so high value in this game. Uh, it's definitely better than Gluttonous Greaves in this particular game, but I kind of overlooked it and just defaulted to the Gluttonous Greaves anyway. But um, yeah, so here I'm really really close to Triforce, so I'm gonna go and take uh, maybe this camp and uh, this should give me enough for Triforce. Also there's the red buff share there, so I want to go pick that up real quick. But yeah, so I decided to completely skip the Wit's End because there's no magic damage and you lose a lot of gold value if you um, are against zero magic damage with the item. So instead, I'm going to skip that, go into the Triforce, and then get a Bloodthirster after the Triforce um, to round out the build. So that, you know, looks, that looks good to me. Uh, great. You get good damage, good healing, you know, just good everything. And yeah, so now we're headed to mid lane, just clearing out mid, getting the priority here. Um, we can see Renekton, uh, Volibear, and Pike all coming toward us, so a little bit of danger here. Um, four of the enemy team members are here. Uh, we have Vayne at bot for our team together with Jace from their team is at bot, or maybe might be way making his way here, so we don't really want to fight because Vayne's not around. Um, Renekton kind of overextends quite a bit, so I'm just you know, comboing him, I'm ulting into his face. Um, here, Jace is actually here, we one-shot him because he, he has run out of spells. Vayne actually makes it here. Starts running people down. I actually pick up the fruit, and uh, Volley Bear goes down as well. I'm chasing onto the Caitlyn, uh, and and the Pike, but uh, unfortunately Caitlyn and uh, sorry Pike manages to escape. Caitlyn does die to me, and Renekton, who's the one who kind of started the fight by getting caught out, actually survives. And instead, it's his teammates that end up going down. So a little bit unfortunate for his team there. Really nice positioning by Mundo to just stand there and block the Pike hook, especially because he didn't have Smite. So he just blocks the Pike hook, make sure Pike can't steal puts his body between Pike and the Baron and lets me secure the Baron with my burst damage. Really well played by the Mundo there. I kind of love this Mundo, he's playing really really well in terms of his ganks and just general gameplay. So here while making our way to mid lane, we're just stopping by at the Raptors to, to get that. So here I'm thinking that maybe you know pushing top lane is probably the best, uh, Jay's getting caught out so I'm just going to run him down first. I'm thinking maybe pushing top lane is the best because tier 1 tower isn't even taken yet. So we should definitely go push over there, especially because we can see Renekton at bot. We can see Caitlyn and Volibear at mid and, and uh, we have Aesol pushing mid. Pike's not at mid as well, so no one is defending top. So we should be able to get at least um, the two outer towers, um, you know, if not the inhibitor. So here, we're just going to start working on the first outer tower. We can still see the, the fight happening at the bot lane. We can see Volibear and Pike there. We can see Caitlyn in mid, so we know it's really safe. To push here, we know Renekton is dead, things like that. So only Pike and Caitlyn are left alive and then now running for the hill. So as mentioned, it's a guaranteed two tower here. And uh, here I was even thinking that with the mid wave pushing in, we should be able to get pressure and um, push. So I'm pinging actually to go for mid, but um, firstly I get caught by everything. I get caught by the, 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 e, the QE of Jace, I get caught by the Caitlyn trap, I get caught by everything and just die. And secondly, Aesol kind of sells us out by Instead of pressuring mid, he's going to get the blue buff share. What he should have done instead is to first pressure mid so that we have more pressure and then get the blue buff share later. But of course he prioritized getting the blue buff and as a result, we had no pressure and we ended up dying. Now of course even if he was mid, we still probably would have died because of how I got caught by everything. But we might have actually been able to get a mid lane tower in trade, a uh, mid lane inhibitor in trade. So might have been a lot more worth it. Now Renekton here is TPing in for some reason. 
uh, into the vein. Now has to flash back out. Uh, yeah, I don't know why you want to TP in there, but yeah, Vayne is destroying him. And um, now we have reset building towards our Bloodthirster, of course. And red buff is um, here again, so we're gonna quickly grab ourselves the red buff. And uh, since Mundo is doing the chickens, we're just gonna go mid and see if we can find the mid wave where Vayne actually is trying to take the mid wave as well. Now Vayne goes a little ham and try to dashes in on the pike, which I don't think is a very good idea. I'm dashing in the Caitlyn, which is a good idea because she's completely cut out of position and we actually one shot her uh, with our spells and our ult. And now Renekton is here. Um, we don't have exhaust for him, so we are gonna have to be a little bit cautious here. Now here I'm just auto attacking whatever I can, just because. And uh, yeah, so here uh, both Jace uh, EQ and Pike Hook hits me, so a little bit of danger there. But you know it's fine. We get back to safety, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna slowly exit the enemy jungle. Don't think there's really anything to fight over. Baron is spawning in uh, 15 seconds, so there is that, of course. So we pick up our Bloodthirst and our 4 full items now, we also have the QSS for the Volley stun, for you know, Renekton, uh, for Renekton stun, you know, if we walk into a Caitlyn trap, or like if we see Pike channeling a hook that we can dodge, QSS is gonna be there. And uh, here we're just clearing the walls, clearing the top lane, being to uh, sure to stay on Baron's side because of course we uh, need to rotate to Baron if necessary. Uh, fight's kinda breaking out mid, so I'm gonna quickly rotate over to mid where Pike uh, seems to Pike and Aesol seem to be in a scuffle. Now here comes the Pike. I'm dashing out of the way uh, of the stun and just letting loose the culling, which does do a decent amount of damage, but not a lot. Now here I'm focusing Renekton, who I have prop PTA on. You can see how tanky he is, despite the fact I have an on-hit build. But we are able to eventually shred him down, and just kill him. Volleyband is running straight towards us for no good reason. Ward over the wall for vision, and Caitlyn's at one HP. Uh, Jace is really low as well. Here we're dodging out of the way of the Pike stun and. Volley Baron's not a bit of trouble as well because you know he can't really handle my damage. And uh, here you can see we're now just kiting Volley Bear out and he's just dead. Caitlyn gets caught in the slow from Aesol and dies as well. And yeah, so now only Jace is left alive and the death timers are pretty long. So we can actually try to end the game here. Um, Aesol gets hit by a combo from Jace and flies away in panic. Now here we're just focusing down the mid lane tower. And um, we should probably be able to end, we're just going to focus the base and um, try to ignore the Jace that rhymes, but yeah, so Mundo pops the out, tanks the tower and is able to tank the Jace damage long enough for me to finish off the game. So there we have it, the on-hit uh, Lucian build. I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual, thank you guys so much for watching the video and goodbye.